So we can pray together. Let's thank God for the Bible study today and praise the Lord for your faithfulness coming every time like this. And I pray the word will keep on having great, great impact in your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name once again. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your preserving power. Thank you, Lord, for the way you've seen us through. Even uh, the last year has, has gone. And then uh, the first few weeks of this year, you've been keeping us and helping us. We're even almost coming to the end of the first month. And yet your grace and your strength has preserved us. Lord, we're praying that this grace will never stop in any one of our lives in Jesus' name. We come to your presence today once again, Lord. We're praying, Lord, feed us with this bread of life and expose to us and reveal to us your very very mind for this present hour in Jesus name and we pray that everything you have done and everything you are still doing will help us to be able to move ahead in the strength and the might and the power of the Lord so that we will do great express for the Lord in this new year in Jesus name once again Lord help us to be doers of the word and not hear us only thank you Lord for the answer in Jesus mighty name we pray Thank you very much. You can sit down. We come once again to the study of the word of God. The Lord is helping us to make progress uh, this year already now. This is, uh, you know, about uh, the fourth uh, Monday or so. And the Lord is leading us into uh, the real word of God. We're coming to First Thessalonians chapter 5. And today we're taking verses 1, 2, and 3. And you're going to see an expression here. As we look at these uh, verses of scripture, I want you to notice the day of of the Lord, the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord, as we, you know, read the passage here. First Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, for when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. Those are the things we're looking at. I want to point your attention to what we learned already. As you go back to chapter 4, you'll see that we have learned about the rapture. And then after the rapture, something is going to happen. And that is what here uh, the apostle is talking about. And he said about the times and the seasons. About the times and the seasons. Which means that there are ages, there are epochs, there are eras, there are periods of time that follow one another. I want you to recollect we're looking at 40 chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 13 here. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even after even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. It's telling us about the rapture. We studied that already. I'm just reminding you of what we know already. That this world will not continue just like that forever. But God is bringing this event and this event and this event and then after that this event and we happen to be people that are living in these last days. And it's telling us that that time will come. When Jesus Christ who rose again, he will come again. And then the people that are still here now, even those who are dead Dead, they then rise up. With, look at verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. We said that again. It's not by human opinion, human ideas, or human congestion. It is by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, precede, or hinder them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. If you were not here at that time, we studied that. I think the second month day of this of this new year it, we explain that time that it is the lord himself that will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the, and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise 
falls. This is talking about the rapture. And then he goes on to say, and then we which are alive which and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. But what shall we be? Are we going to remain in the air forever? No. It's, it says we're going to be with the Lord forever with the Lord as we studied last time, Monday. And then it says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words. The, the previous chapter, that's chapter 4, ended with comfort, commendation, and reward, and heaven. We're going to be in heaven. After that, after the rapture has taken place, and then we're up in heaven, what's going to be happening in this world? That's what the Lord is telling us. That's why it says, you Thessalonians, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. What it meant is, you knew this before. We taught you when we were there. We revealed all these things to you that the events of the last days, what we call eschatology, that those things are going to happen. And because we showed you and we revealed to you, you are not in ignorance. And then because of that, you know that we ought to be prepared. I need to say something here before we go on. You know, Paul the Apostle and Silas and Timothy, they spent about just about three weeks, three Sabbaths in Thessalonica. And then within those three weeks, think about that, that they taught them so much and they knew so much. They knew of the coming of the Lord. They also knew about the day of the Lord from the time a believer gets there. He believes. In fact, he says in uh, chapter 1, and then in the last verse, he says to wait for his son from heaven. That is, they were already expecting the coming of the Lord, and they were waiting for his son, that his son will come. That is, the very son of God, Jesus Christ, will come. And then he says, until the time of the rapture, and then the second coming again, and then the millennial time everything they are taught them i'm asking you a question now brother and sister i'm asking you a question pastor and preacher i'm asking you overseer state overseer region overseer and national overseers do we teach the people of god so convincingly that we're teaching them and they know without any shadow of doubt even though they have just come to know the lord we're not saying okay they don't know they cannot know this about salvation they cannot know this now about water baptism they cannot know this now about the lord's supper they cannot know know this about the rapture they cannot know this now about sanctification and holiness they cannot know this now about the power of the holy ghost in our lives they cannot know this now when will they know it if they cannot know it now the Thessalonian believers they knew everything that's why paul the apostle said of the times and of the seasons brethren ye have no need that i write unto you for ye yourselves know what a wonderful thing. They had well taught them. And he taught them to the point, he says, you yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. They knew that the day of the Lord was coming. And because they knew the day of the Lord was coming, that's why they were preparing themselves, waiting for the coming of the Lord. And then it says, for they, and that is the people of the world, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman man with child and they shall not escape. Uh, can I point something to your attention over here? When we read in the previous chapter, that is in chapter 4, it, it talks about we and we and we all the time. We which are alive, we shall be caught up together with them and so shall we ever be with the Lord and comfort one another we with these words. Talking about the believers. Have you noticed something here in chapter 5 that I'm reading to you? It's talking about not we but they. That is the people of the world. Those who are not saved. Those who are not born again. Those who have not given their lives the Lord. Let me point your attention to this. It says in verse 3, and when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as uh, travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. It's talking about the fury of the Lord, the wrath of the Lord, the judgment of the Lord that will come upon the people that do not know the Lord. That's what he's talking about. But you know, this subject of the day of the Lord was not anything strange. Even the people in the Old Testament, they knew that the day of the Lord was coming. The apostle had written so clearly in the previous chapter, the rapture was a mystery to the Old Testament prophets, but they knew of the coming day of the Lord. Uh, I, let me just show you some scriptures here that talks about the Old Testament people knowing about the day of the Lord, the fury that will come.
come, the wrath that will come, the punishment that will come, and all the all the pain that will come upon the people of the world when the day of the Lord shall come. That's why Paul the apostle said, "You are not in ignorance of this. You knew this. The Old Testament so clearly teaches it. Not only that, we told you when we were with you that the day of the Lord will so come as a thief in the night." Let's look at this in Isaiah chapter 15, chapter thirteen. Isaiah chapter thirteen. I'm looking at verse six. How ye? For the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Old Testament people, they didn't know about the rapture because they didn't know about the church, but they knew about the uh, day of the Lord because this will be a time of the suffering of the people of Israel who have rejected the Lord. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 30. I'm reading there from verse 3. Ezekiel chapter 30. We're looking at verse 3. It says, for the day is near even the day of the lord is near a cloudy day it shall be well, for it shall be the time of the heathen that is the time when the heathen the pagans the unbelievers the sinners who have rejected the lord when they shall suffer as well look at joel chapter one joel one of the minor prophets joel chapter one we're looking at verse 15 and you will see that this day of the lord was not a strange phenomenon it was not a strange subject to the people of the old testament we're looking at joel chapter 1 verse 15 alas for the day for the day of the lord is at hand as a destruction from the almighty shall it come well all those old testament people they spoke about the day of the lord and then even the new testament too the new testament talks about the day of the lord in acts of the apostles on the day of pentecost while peter was speaking to the people he reminded them that this concept and this period of the day of the Lord is not going to be a strange age or come with devastation and destruction and many people are going to suffer because they have rejected and neglected the word of the Lord. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 and I'm reading there from verse 20. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Old Testament talking about it. New Testament talking about it and assuring us that that day Day is coming. Second Peter chapter three verse ten. Second Peter chapter three. We're looking at verse ten, reminding us. You know, everybody talking about it. When you think about the prophets of the Old Testament, day of the Lord, day of the Lord, day of the Lord. And you think of the apostles of the New Testament, and they're talking about the same thing. Day of the Lord, day of the Lord. That shows you then, from the left hand, from the right hand, the two journey together, talking about the day of the Lord. There's going to be devastation upon the people of the world at that time. I pray you will not be here. I said, I pray you will not be here. Look at Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Well, then it's so very clear that the day of the Lord is coming for the first time in centuries. The Jews now they have they have the existence in their homeland and religious bodies are forming ecumenical movements and the apostate church is moving towards a vast religious political commercial system to become the Babylon Babylon the Great and there is worldwide occultism and or spiritism swooping swooping over vast areas of every part of the world if you think about the news we're reading about in our country here also in the country of Africa and everywhere in the world, you see that violence and civil disobedience, energized by the spirit of lawlessness, they are abounding in the home, in the na in national life, and even in the worldwide church. This is telling us that the mystery of iniquity already is at work, and the rise of anti-Christian spirit and denial of the fundamentals of the faith are obvious all over the world. Why are we saying that? Because all these things will be happening just before the coming of the day of the Lord. That shows then that this day of the Lord was talking about that we're talking about today is about to come. But before it comes, the rapture will take place. As chapter 4 
comes before chapter 5 and the rapture in chapter 4 will come before the day of the Lord in chapter 5. So we know as all these uh, things are gathering up, all the gathering up momentum, we know that the rapture is about to take place and immediately we are gone. Immediately the rapture takes place, then the day of the Lord will take over in this world. We're looking at this prophetic perspective on the day of the Lord. That is subject today. Prophetic perspective on the day of the Lord. We're going to study this under three perspectives. Number one, the coming of the day of the Lord. The coming. That day is coming. The coming of the day of the Lord. Number two, the characteristics of the day of the Lord. The characteristics of the day of the Lord. And then number three, the condemnation of the deceived and the lost. The people will be deceived. They will think, oh, the world is going on. Nothing is going to happen as it was, so it is, and so it will ever be. And while they're in that deception, suddenly, all of a sudden, the sudden destruction will come upon them. That's what point number three is talking about, the condemnation and damnation of the deceived and the lost. Let's come back to number one. Number one now, the coming of the day of the Lord. Let's come back to First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. And he's, t- he's talking about this in chapter 5 verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Ye have no need that I write unto you. It's, you know, I could have said, uh, like, uh, for salvation and for sanctification and for Holy Ghost baptism, brothers and sisters, you have no need that I preach unto you. Why would I say that? Because you have had it over and over and over. And you're sure, except a man be born again, he cannot see the Lord. You are sure, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Because of the certainty you have and because of the knowledge you have, and nobody can shake you. Out of that knowledge, that's why I will say concerning this one man and one wife, and you don't have need that I write to it. Concerning this, that marriage is for life, you don't need that I write to you because you are so sure and you are so definite, and nobody can shake you from the knowledge and the conviction. The same thing Paul the Apostle was telling the people, I've taught you this so confidently, and I've taught you this and I've affirmed it over and over, and you are sure beyond any shadow of doubt that this day of the Lord is coming. That's why I say, I don't even have to write to you about this. And let's look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 and then you will see how the apostles themselves, they ask the Lord Jesus Christ about the times and the seasons, the seasons and the times. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, chapter 1 verses 6 and 7. When did therefore were come together? They asked of him saying, Lord, when wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? You understand what they are talking about? The millennial kingdom coming in the land of Israel and Jerusalem will be the chief city, the capital city and then the laws will go out from Zion. There will be peace everywhere. Will this be at that time when you are going to restore that kingdom unto Israel? Look at the answer of Jesus and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the season. That's the language. It's not the time for you to know it is not for you to know the times and the seasons which the father has put in his own power that means that time that is the timetable of the events of the last days it's not in your hand it's not in my hand it's not in any theologian's hand it's in the hand of the father himself that's why jesus said yes that time will come yes that season will come yes that establishment of the kingdom will come but it's not for you to know the timetable the thing you are to do but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and then to the uttermost part of the earth after you've covered Samaria. So he's telling us then that day is coming. That day is coming. But only the Lord knows exactly what time that will be. We're looking at Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. And there we're reading from verse 30 and to verse 33. Mark chapter 13. Reading from verse 30. That day is coming. And the Lord tells us it will surely come. But then it will come as a thief in the night. It says in Mark chapter 13 verse 33. Take ye heed. Be careful. Be aware. Be watchful. Beware. And watch and pray. For ye know not when the time is. The time and the season. Yes, it's coming. But you don't know the exact time on the calendar. It is coming. Only the Father knows about this. And then it says, For the Son of Man is as a man that 
churches that is taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch watch it therefore for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at evening or at midnight or at cock crowing or in the morning let's come in suddenly he find you sleeping and what i say unto you i say unto all watch the lord is saying because that day will come suddenly and because it will come as a thief in the night he says therefore watch what does the scripture actually mean by the day of the lord when it says the day of the lord what you want to understand it is not the day of man that means it is not a day of 24 hours when it says the day of the lord or the day of man for man a day is 24 hours but then for the lord the day of the lord is very very different it's a period of time after the rapture of the true church the whole, the old testament prophet spoke of it and wrote of it of the certainty of its coming of its occurrence the new testament apostles were also inspired by the holy spirit to want the church of its reality the thessalonian believers had no need that anything should be written to them anymore concerning the times and the seasons or the concerning or concerning the coming day of the lord they already had perfect knowledge about these eschatological events this much is certain number one it will come unexpectedly because the bible says over here in first thessalonians chapter chapter five verses one to three as a thief in the night as a thief in the night which means it will be unexpected number two it will come when the world deceptively say peace and safety when you say there's no problem we thought we had economic problem but now things are changing no more recession everything is now going okay and everything poverty will be eradicated in the world um, you know all these uh, water diseases everything will be eradicated all this will improve third world people living below poverty level everything is going to change all of a sudden while they are seeing peace and safety then sudden destruction shall come upon them number three it will bring sudden destruction upon the people of the world at that time i pray you will not be here i said i pray you will not be here number four now the world's pain and suffering will be inevitable and inescapable because it will come as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape they not us we have escaped already we have gone to heaven already we are forever with the lord already in heaven but it says they the people of the world shall not escape let's see what the word of god is saying in luke chapter 21 luke chapter 21 we're reading from verse 24 luke chapter 21 and we're reading from verse 24 from verse 24 let's see what the lord is saying here it says and they shall fall by the edge of the sword not we not we not we not we children of god not we believers not the people who have been washing the blood of them what a difference between believers and unbelievers what a difference between saints and sinners what a difference between the real church the true church and then the worldly church over there it says and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and jerusalem shall be trodden down of the gentiles until the times of the gentiles be fulfilled and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring you know, those are the things that are coming upon the world the, the sea it, it to affect the land and the sea earthquakes on the land and then the running of the sea and then the thunders and everything both land and sea and sky and the whole world the whole earth will be affected at that time it says in verse 26 men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking at those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken i just pray you'll not be here at that time that would have gone with the lord at the time of the rapture when all these times and seasons and the days and the day of the Lord will come upon the people. Then it says in verse 27, Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. That means at the end of the traumatic time, the troublous times, and the terrible times, and the perilous times, then the Lord will come. He will come the second time now to set up his kingdom upon the earth. That's why the apostles were asking, Would you at this time restore the kingdom unto Israel? And said, This is not the time yet. Just go and evangelize. Now. Just go and preach the 
the gospel now. Receive the power, tarry for the power of God upon your life and then go out and preach the gospel and get the people saved that will go up in the rapture. And then after the rapture, then it will come and this great thing will happen. It goes on to say in verse 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws near. It's talking to the children of Israel, the Jews, the redemption of Israel as a nation at that time will draw near. You have passed through all the trial, tribulation of the tribulation, great tribulation period and then when Christ comes in the air, then will be the time when uh, these uh, people will have their redemption. It says in verse 29, and he spake unto them a parable, behold the fig tree and all the trees when they now shoot forth, ye see and know that your, your own of your own selves, that summer is near, is nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when you see these things come to pass, know that that, that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. It says heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. It's telling us that this predicted day of the Lord is coming. It's coming. And the people who are careless, they will not they will not escape that period. And let's go back to the Old Testament once again. Obadiah chapter chapter one. As only one chapter, Obadiah. I'm looking at it there from verse 15. Obadiah, verse 15. For the day of the Lord, you think about this. I as I mentioned the day of the Lord. In fact, Ezekiel mentioned the day of the Lord. Joel mentioned the day of the Lord. And here we have this, just one chapter of the Bible uh, from Obadiah. Obadiah is also mentioned the day of the Lord. And that means, that that's why Paul the Apostle said, this is so sure, this is so definite. You don't even need for me to write unto you about this. Everybody is talking about it. This is common knowledge that the day of the Lord is coming. That's why the Lord is saying that if you are going to escape, this is the time to escape. And this is the time to get saved. This is the time to tell your friends and your neighbors and your relatives that we need to get saved and need to come to know the Lord so that the day of the Lord will not come upon them unawares. Obadiah verse 15, it says, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done. It shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. That day is coming. Let's look at Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 14. I mean from verses 1, 2, and 3. Zechariah chapter 14. We're looking at verses 1, 2, and 3. The certainty of the day of the Lord coming. Behold in chapter 14 verse 1. Behold the day of the Lord cometh and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle and the city shall be taken King, and the horses and the houses rifled and the women ravaged and half of the city shall go forth into captivity and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then in verse 3 it says, then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. The, the point is very clear that the day of the Lord is coming and I pray that you will escape that. Even though the people of the world will not escape, you will escape as you go up in the rapture before that day of the Lord will come in Jesus' name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 34. Isaiah chapter 34. We're looking at verses 8, 9, and 10. Isaiah chapter 34. Verse 8, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense. It's a recompenses for the controversy of Zion and the streams thereof shall be turned into peach and the doors thereof into brimstone and the land thereof shall become burning peach and it shall not be quench night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. It's saying that when the devastation has, has come, then what is left behind will just be destruction, desolation, devastation, and just the ashes. Let's come to point number two now. This day of the Lord that we're talking about, what are the characteristics? How, do you, how will the 
people of the world at that time, how will they feel? What will they know? What will they experience? The characteristics of the day of the Lord. We're back to First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'm reading there from verse 2. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. It says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. He said, You Thessalonians, you're not ignorant. I've taught you. I've revealed it to you. I showed you, verse, to, verse after verse and chapter after chapter, I showed you what the Lord has revealed through his holy prophets concerning the coming day of the Lord. That's why he said, Now you know perfectly that that day of the Lord cometh so cometh as a thief in the night. And, and the question is, how did he show them? What? How did he reveal it to them? Was it by dream, by vision, by revelation? No, by the word of God. And it is the certainty of the word of God that gave them that conviction. Now let's, let's go through it and see what Isaiah said, what Jeremiah said, and what Ezekiel said, what Joel said, what Sephaniah said, and what even the apostles of the New Testament, what they said about this coming day of the Lord. And like the Thessalonians became so certain, so sure, and so confirmed in their understanding, Concerning the same day of the Lord, you too you'll have the same assurance and the same confirmation in your heart when you see it over and over in the word of God that this has been prophesied even before this time. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be confirmed. If I showed you from two prophets, if I showed you from three or from four or from five, apostles and prophets, Old Testament, New Testament, how certain the day of the Lord is, you'll be without any shadow of doubt that this day of the Lord is actually coming. And then you will see the kind of pain, the kind of suffering, and the kind of devastation, the kind of destruction that will be upon the people of the world at this time of the day of the Lord. Let's look at it. Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah 13. We're looking at verse 6. How are ye? For the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. I want you to please understand something because sometimes some people will say, but it says the day of the Lord is at hand. And this is Isaiah. And then you are still saying, it's still in the future. You Don't you understand? Isaiah was going to talk about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. He spoke at, at, of it as if it's happened already. You know, that's how the prophets of the Old Testament, when they saw that something is certain, something is sure, and something will definitely come to pass. That's how they say it. They say, it is at hand for you to know it will definitely happen. Then it goes on. It says, there Therefore shall all hands be faint, and then he says, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid, and pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. Isn't that the same thing that we read in First Thessalonians chapter five, verse two, as verse three, as a woman in travail? And Isaiah is saying the same thing that the pain will come, the trouble, will come, the trauma will come upon them, and the tribulation will come upon them. And then it says, and they shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall gather, shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel with both wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. That is, it's come because of the sinner. It's not come because of the saints. It's not come because of the believers. It's not come because of the righteous. It's come because of the sinners. And it says, for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in, the, in its going forth. And then it says, and the moon shall not cause a light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And that's the characteristic of the day of the Lord that is coming. The believers in Salonika already knew that the day of the Lord will certainly come. Now, they had to remember that it will come when least expected. The scriptures declare 
that the day of the Lord will be a period of judgment, of desolation, and of darkness. It will be a time when God will arise and punish his enemies severely and decisively. Even Israel will be punished for their iniquity and backsliding. The day of the Lord is characterized by judgment against the world and all who forget God. The present time appears to be man's day when many people in the world uh, just live in the Dependent of God, but the day of the Lord is coming and it is fast approaching. That's why the New Testament said, because we know this terror, they were warning people. Let's look at uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 30. I told you that all these prophets, they spoke about, they saw it coming, they saw it coming and they warned the people. They said, if you are going to repent, this is the time to repent. If you are going to tell your neighbors and your family people to repent, this is the time to go out and tell them because this terrible day of suffering is coming upon the land and they will not escape. Ezekiel chapter 30, I'm reading there from verse 1 through to verse 3. It says, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy, and say, thus says the Lord God, thus says the Lord God. God. You see, this thing we're talking about, the day of the Lord, the day of suffering, the day of punishment, day of devastation, day of destruction, and day of desolation, it's not the word of man. It's not the word of just an ordinary man just thinking, just, you know, churning it out of his own mind, saying, I wish the Lord will punish the people of the world for their sin. I wish the Lord will punish all these people because of their evil. No! It's talking about the Lord himself that said that this is going to happen. And you better wake up and you better do the right thing and get prepared so that, that day will not come upon you unawares. Look at verse, look at verse two, son of man, prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord God, How ye woe was the day? Verse 3 For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day. It shall be be the time of the heathen. Shall be the time when the heathen, when they're going to be punished. Let's come to Joel now. We're ready before. Let, let's read more of Joel again. In Joel chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 15 here. Joel chapter 1, verse 15. And as you turn the pages of the Bible, and you turn this over in your mind, meditate on this in your mind. Understand that this is definite. If these prophets are one by one, one by one, one by one, they're talking about it. This is definite, and this is is real. We're looking at Joel chapter 1 verse 15. Alas for the day. For the day of the Lord is at hand as a destruction from the Almighty. As a destruction. Not from Satan. Not from the Antichrist. This one is the punishment of the Lord upon the people. As a destruction from the Almighty shall each come. Look at Joel chapter 2 verse 1. Chapter 2 verse 1. It says blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is near at hand. It's not just for the heathen, it's for the people of Israel too and he said it's coming. It's coming. It's so certain and it is near at hand. That same chapter 2 verse 11. In verse 11 it says and the Lord shall alter his voice before his army and for his camp is very great for his strong that executeth his word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible and who can abide it. The strongest of men, the mightiest of men, they will howl and they will reel in pain because of that day of the Lord. Verse 31 of that same chapter 2. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day day of the Lord come. Let's look at Sephaniah. See Old Testament, Old Testament, Sephaniah now. We're looking at chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. Sephaniah, reading from chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. And see what the Lord is still saying concerning the day of the Lord. The Lord revealed it to so many prophets at different times so that nobody will say, I didn't know. I would have prepared. I was ignorant. I would have prepared. If I knew that the terrible day was coming, I would have repented. The Lord is telling you, by the mouth of many, many prophets of the Old Testament and many apostles of the New Testament, that this day of the Lord is coming. Please wake up and please again Get, get into repentance and say, Oh Lord, I don't want this day to come upon me suddenly unprepared. Sephaniah, now chapter 1, verse 7. Here it says, Behold thy peace, uh, thy, thy, thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the 
day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord has prepared his sacrifice. He has bid his guests. Look at verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish, I will punish, I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Think about that. With strange apparel. With strange apparel. You know that the people that belong to, you know, secret cause, they have strange apparel. The people that belong to secret society, you know, they have strange apparel. You know, the people that are in the cults, they, they wear a kind of uniform. You may not know, you may not understand, but they know themselves strange apparel. And you know the people who are making morality to flourish in the land, who are passing uh, HIV is one to the other. They wear strange apparel, men and women. And you know the people who shed blood and the murderers and all those idol, idol worshippers, they have the uniform, strange apparel. And the Lord is saying at that time, when the day of the Lord shall come, it says, it's going to punish all such as are clothed, strange apparel. That's why we're telling you that come out of the world and come out of their practice and come out of all the things they're practicing, all their strange apparel of the occult, strange apparel of magicians, strange apparel of those uh, who are taking drugs and who are violent in their lives, strange apparel, those uh, street boys and stringers come out from among them so that you become separate, so that the destruction that is coming upon these people of the world will not come upon you in Jesus' name. If you say you are a beloved sister, a child of God and you are washing the blood, blood of the Lamb and that you say you are a new creature, you become a new creature in Christ as a lady, as a sister, how do you dress like a prostitute? Strange apparel. And the Lord is saying this this day of the Lord, when it comes, it will come with devastation or with judgment and desolation upon the people. I pray it will not happen to you. Tonight, as you get back home, check up in your wardrobe, check up in your room, and check up where you are. Strange apparel. And if any occultic man give you their mantle, give you like, it's like, like Elijah, passing the mantle on to Elisha. That mantle is not just ordinary clothes. It is the mantle of the spirit upon them. And when they pass unto you the strange apparel and the strange clothing and you know they belong to the occult they belong to civil society and they pass that on they are passing their spirit on you say no i'm not going to wear that you get all those things out and throw them away and burn them up and if you are being in the cult if you're being in the occultism and all this a uh, kind of all this sorcery and everything and they give you the the, the apparel the strange apparel is to pass on their spirit and therefore you say oh, no i'm not going to allow that to touch my body i pray the lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. We're looking at chapter chapter 1, 7, chapter 1, verse 14. For the great day of the Lord is near. It is near, and he says greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. You know, the people who are hearing the word of God and they're saying, well, there's nothing to it. We can endure it. We can abide in it. The day of the Lord is coming and who shall be able to abide? That's the reason why you need to come to the Lord right now. And I pray that the Lord will make a change in your life in Jesus' name. And we're looking at Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. We're looking at verse 15, the Revelation chapter 16. We're looking at verse 15 and see what the Lord is saying. That this devastation is coming. This devastation is coming it will come like a thief in the night. That's why you're saying you don't have any time to waste, any time to lose. This is the moment. If you're going to repent, this is the moment to repent. If you're going to be righteous, this is the time to be righteous. And if you're going to go out and tell your friends and tell your neighbors and tell your relatives that the day of the Lord is coming, judgment is coming, like the angels told the Lord, they said, Oh, get up immediately. Do you have anybody here? A relative here? A son here? A daughter here? A son-in-law here? A daughter-in-law here? All the people are here that you know. Go and tell them destruction is coming upon Sodom and Gomorrah. He went out and it's like it was just it's like you are not serious. A city like this where we just do whatever we want. How can that kind of destruction came? Come. But it came. It came. And the Lord is saying the same thing. This is another time of urgency. The urgency of the hour that you go and tell other people so that they will not perish in the coming devastation upon the land. Let's look at Revelation chapter 16 and I'm looking at it from verse 15. Behold, I come I come as a thief and blessed is he that watcheth and 
keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and this see his shame. Let's say walk naked, let's say walk naked and this see his shame. I pray you will not be among the people that will be lost at that time in Jesus' name. You know why uh, Paul the Apostle was so zealous in evangelism? Why he told other people? Because he knew the day of the Lord was coming. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. How did he know the terror of the Lord? Because he knew of the day of the Lord. He knew the characteristics of the day of the Lord. He knew the judgment coming concerning the day of the Lord. He knew the destruction, the desolation coming. That's why I said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. He knew that the moon will be turned into blood and the sun will lose its light and the, all the stars will be falling. He knew of the trauma, the trouble, the tribulation that will come, come upon the people when the Lord Jesus Christ, when he said, when he's setting, when he's getting ready and he's set to come, to come and establish his kingdom. That's I said, knowing the judgment and the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. The Lord has given us the word of reconciliation. He has given us the word that will get people to know the Lord. And he says, we know the terror of the Lord, we know the judgment of the Lord, we know the punishment coming upon this world. Because of that, rise up and tell all the people. Paul the Apostle said, that's why I'm doing my best and that's why I'm telling everybody I'm all things to all men so that by all means I can save some all things to all men so that by all means I can save some have that mind in you too have that passion in you too that the people around you who do not know what it means to be saved who do not know what it means to come to know the Lord and the judgment is coming that they will not remain in ignorance look at verse 20 of that uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 it says now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ said, be ye reconciled unto God. That's what you have to tell everybody around you. Every, it's urgent. It's urgent because of the judgment coming. In fact, that's why Paul the Apostle said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, look at this, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're looking at it from verse 16. I'm sure you read this before. I think recently you had this in the conference that you know we had talking about evangelism, but even though you have heard, what have you done about it? You know the judgment of God. You know the terror of the Lord. And you know this characteristic of the coming day of the Lord and it's coming suddenly and the people will not escape and this is the time if they're going to escape this is the time for them to escape look at this first Corinthians chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 16 for though I preach the gospel I I have nothing to glory of for necessity, necessity is laid upon me, ye woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel Paul is saying with all that I know, or the suffering coming that I know, or the judgment coming that I know, if I preach not the gospel, woe unto me. And then he said, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. If I do it willingly, I have a reward. Uh, you know, my brothers and sisters, all this time that the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, is the of the Lord that is emphasizing evangelism at this momentous time, at this critical time. There are some people that are, you know, dragging their feet about how about this, and how about this, and how about that and Paul the apostle said I know what is coming I know the destruction I know the punishment and if I do it willingly I have a reward for necessity laid upon me had said and then he said but if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me he said if it's against my will the spirit of God is putting so much pressure upon him go out and evangelize go out and do it tell other people he said if I get up and I do it willingly without anybody pushing me, dragging me, pulling me or doing anything or even having to say, okay, if you don't do that, you're not going to do this again. Nobody put any pressure. But he said, even if they put pressure and I do it against my will, yet in necessity is laid upon me. What is my reward then? Very late that when I preach the gospel, I make I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my liberty, my authority, my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might 
gain the more. I make myself serve. That is, I'm willing to serve the sinners. I'm willing to not serve them as if you don't want to encourage them in their sin. Give my time to them. Give my talent to them. And give up whatever I would have done so that I can bring the word of salvation unto the people. Then it says, it goes on to say, that I might gain the more unto the Jews I became as a Jew. I go to them where they are as a Jew. I do not expect them to come out to me, but I go unto them. And then he said that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law. That I might gain them that are under the law and to them that are without law as without law. Be not without law to God, but under the law to Christ. That I might gain them that are without law. To the weak I became as weak and that I might gain the weak and then I am made all things I made all things to all men that I might by all means save some and this I do for the gospel's sake that I may be partaker thereof with you telling us then that this is so important that we need to reach out to the people that are perishing so that we will not be condemned by our own negligence I want you to look at Ezekiel chapter 3 Ezekiel chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 17 Ezekiel Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. That's why it says, Paul the apostle said, necessity is laid upon me. If I don't do it, I, I become guilty. If you don't do it, you become guilty. Look at Ezekiel chapter 3 and reading from verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Hear the word at my mouth. Give them warning from me that the day of the Lord is coming. The day of judgment is coming and the devastation will be terrible upon the people of the world when that day comes when I say unto the wicked thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speakest to warn the wicked from the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will I require at thine hand and this is why I'm emphasizing this over and over is so that the perishing of any sinner the lostness of any sinner will not be your fault so that their blood will not be required at your hand. yet in verse 19 if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wicked from his wickedness nor from his wicked way he shall die in his iniquity but thou hast delivered thy soul Again, Again in verse 20, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness, somebody is born again, is righteous by the grace of God, washing the blood of the Lamb, and then all of a sudden he turns away from that righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, but and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Talk to the backsliders. Bring them back to the Lord. Restore them back to the Lord and warn them that the day of the Lord is coming. And when it comes, judgment is going to be terrible. Nevertheless, in verse 21, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he sworn. And also thou hast delivered thy soul. We're coming back to 4 Thessalonians chapter 5, now verse 3. First Thessalonians chapter 5, we're looking at verse 3. Point number 3, now the condemnation of the deceived and the lost. Those who deceive themselves or those who allow themselves to be deceived by other people, the condemnation, the damnation, the terrible judgment that will come upon them. First Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 3, for when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And they shall not escape. It says, you see, most people, they live in false security. The whole world had an air of confidence and false security at the time of Noah. It's like nothing will happen. Noah, the righteous preacher, he was warning them that judgment is coming. Destruction is coming. The rain is going to get everybody and everybody is going to be down, down in, the, in the flood. And then they say, oh, there's no problem. It had never rained. How can something like that happen? They say, 
can you imagine that you know the rain will so fall and flood everywhere have you ever seen any flood that goes beyond your ankle any flood that goes beyond your knee any flood that goes beyond your waist look at what Noah is saying that the flood is going to come and then everybody in the world will be so submerged and you are going to die they say nothing like that can happen but it happened my friend it happened as they were joking and jesting and giggling and you know and slandering Noah the righteous man and the righteous preacher and say what came upon him this man is, he said it's not correct anymore how can this happen but it happened and this thing that we're telling you again that the judgment is coming the day of the Lord is coming the people who are jesting the people are not serious and the people are feeling that well nothing will happen suddenly it will come upon them I pray you will take warning so that that day will not come upon you unawares in Jesus name all the people in Sodom dwelt carelessly and they were at ease when sudden judgment and destruction came upon them the world of sinners and careless or carefree religious people have not learned any lesson from the past for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and it says and they shall not escape God's judgment will come suddenly and descend on the heedless world with vast destruct destructive force while they are eating and drinking buying and selling, marrying and giving in marriage, then the flood of inevitable judgment and the fire of divine wrath will overtake them. The Lord has warned us and called us to constant watchfulness so that we may not be, so we may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And let's see what the word of God is saying. Jeremiah chapter 11 jeremiah chapter 11 i'm reading from verses 11 and 12 jeremiah chapter 11 we're reading from verses 11 and 12 11 of jeremiah and then verse 11 it says in verse 11 therefore thus says the lord thus says thus says the lord this is the lord i want you to notice that every time and whatever the lord says will come to pass is a god of knowledge is a God of power. And whatever he says, nothing can contradict it. He says, I send my word. It shall not return to me void until it accomplishes that for which I sent it. Therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon them, when, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hack into them. The Lord is saying, there is a time when if you pray, will answer. This time of grace, the period of grace, but when that time finishes, and then the people, then they wait until the devastating judgment comes. The Lord is saying, they shall cry unto me, but I will not hear. Then he says in verse 12, then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offered incense but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. The Lord is telling us then if there's any time to pray, there's a time to pray. If there's any time to repent, there's a time to repent. If you repent one hour too late, then you are lost forever. If you say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. I'll do it another time. I'm still planning something. I want to accomplish that thing. I'm still trying to, I'm going to revenge on that person before. Well, after the revenge, then I will repent. I'm still going to get that money unlawfully in a dubious way, fraudulent way. After that, I'm going to, I, I'm still, you know, I'm still going to commit this uh, immorality with this woman or with this man. I want to, you know, get that done. When I do that, after that, God is a God of grace and the repentance will come. Salvation will come. If you're too late, forever you are lost that's the reason why today is the time to repent and don't plan on committing sin in the future sin next week and sin next month and then after that sin then i'll come back to the lord the lord is saying this is the moment of repentance i pray that your repentance will not be too late in jesus name and the lord himself was giving us all this warning he'll help you to rise up immediately and get down what you need to do at this moment and look at amos chapter amos chapter 5 and is saying that the people that even think they are suffering now, you have not seen any suffering yet. The people that think that they are in any difficulty, you have not seen difficulty yet because that day of the Lord, when it comes and it comes suddenly upon the people, there's no escape, it's going to be terrible and devastating. Amos chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 18 also to verse 20. It says, Warn to you that desire the day of the Lord. That is the people that say, Let it come, let it come. What's going to happen that anybody cannot endure? This happened before we endure, that happened before 
before we endured, and this happened, went through it, let it come. It says, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? For the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if, look at verse 19, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand upon the wall, and a serpent beat him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it? There's no grace in it. There's no love in it. There's, there's not going to be any relief in it at all. If there's any time to repent, this is the time to repent. And I pray that the Lord will drill this into your mind and put pressure upon your heart so that you know the goodness of the Lord at this time now is leading you to repentance. So don't say well uh, after all the Lord is kind. Yes he's kind. After all the Lord is good. Yes he's good. But the goodness of the Lord, the kindness of the healing of the Lord and the mercy of the Lord and the favor of the Lord at this time is leading you to repentance so that you will not perish on that last final day. Look at Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 2. We're looking at verse 1. It says therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou uh, that judgest doest the same thing. And you know, sometimes when you read the story of the flood, the flood at the time of Noah, you're saying, how, how could that those people be so foolish? How could they be so careless? One twenty years, that righteous man warning them, and they just they were not challenged. God was right to judge them. You judging those people, saying they were careless. How about you? All the messages you have heard, all the things you have known. You've gone to retreat. You've gone for conference. You've gone for this. You've gone for that. You've read the Bible. You've come for Monday Bible study. You have come for Sunday. Are you born again? Are you a child of God? You were born in this church. Your parents, they know the Lord. And your father, your mother, they read the Bible with you every morning. And then, have you been born again? You heard it in the school. You heard it in the church. You heard it at home. Have you given your life to the Lord? You know the people that say, those people of Sodom and Gomorrah, how foolish they were. How could they do that? Even angels came to their city and then held on to the hand of Lord and Lord's wife and said, escape, escape for life. Get to the mountain. Don't stay anywhere in the valley. And then told that family, don't look back and then lord's wife look back and then in your mind you're saying how could she do that that your mom must have been very foolish and very careless you judging lord's wife how about you how about you do not look back do not turn back have you not looked back have you not looked back and the lord is saying you judging other people will you escape when the sin comes upon you the lord is saying come Come to the Lord now. You don't have any time to waste at all. You know, sometimes we read about these Pharisees and all these Sadducees. They saw the healings of Jesus and the deliverances of Jesus and everything. He opened the eyes of the blind. He made the lame to rise up and walk. He multiplied bread and fed everybody. And still, they will not believe. You say, how could they be so hard-hearted? You people judging them. How about you? You've not seen miracles? You've not seen healing. You know what all the blind eyes that open and the deaf ears that open and the lame people that rose up and walked. You've not seen goiter remote. You've not seen tumor getting away. You've not seen HIV AIDS healed and yet you remain in your sin. If you are judging other people and say, they didn't do well, they didn't do well, they didn't do well. Are you doing well? And then when the Lord is telling us, rise up and go and tell your people that they will not perish. And then you are saying, well, you know, I don't have time now. I'll do it later. That's exactly the other, what the other people did. That's why the Lord says, saying, you are without excuse, O oh man. Whosoever you are that judges other people, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same thing. Look at verse 2. It says, but when to assure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things, and thinkest thou this, O oh man, that judges them which do the same thing and do and you do the same thing that thou shall escape the judgment of God. I pray you will escape. Everyone, I pray that we will escape in Jesus' name. But we cannot say we're not getting saved, we're not being born again. It says, in fact, in Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading to you there from verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more honest heed. 
to the things which we have heard. Let's at any time we should let them sleep. The things we heard all these years we were coming to church, all the things we had, I'm sure you have you have tapes, I'm sure you have the CDs and the MP3s in your houses, I'm sure you have the 24 by 7, I'm sure you are hearing it over and over and over and the Lord is saying it's not enough to just hear that we need to give them more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we let them sleep anytime. For if the word spoken by angels Angels were steadfast, and every every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape? That's the word. How shall we escape? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which had the first began to be spoken by the Lord? The salvation the Lord Himself preached. He preached it to Nicodemus, and he preached it to the people in Jerusalem, and the people in all Jude, saying, "Except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish." When the word came out from the mouth of the Lord Jesus. Christ himself and the people see neglected if they perish can you blame anybody and when the word that came out of the mouth of Jesus is coming to you directly today and then you neglect if you perish can you blame anybody else shall we escape how will you escape if you neglect so great salvation which had the force began to be spoken of by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him I pray we'll escape I said I pray we'll escape but remember there are be no room for carelessness, for carefree attitude, for nonchalant attitude. If we're going to escape, in fact, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, He warned us, He told us to remember Lord's wife. Look at this in, in Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. I'm reading there from verse 28. Luke chapter 17. We're looking at it from verse 28. It says, Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lord, they did eat and they drank. And they bought and they sold and they planted and they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone up from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And then he tells us in verse 30 to remember Lot's wife. She saw the angels but perished. Remember Lot's wife. And then the angels even laid holes on her hand. And then, but she, she perished and then the angel spoke to her she had the voice of angels you know some people tell me I had a dream I had a dream what have you done about the dream I saw vision I saw vision what have you done about the vision I saw an angel an angel spoke to me what have you done about that some people even say I went to heaven and came back how is your life different after you went to heaven and came back I saw hell I saw this what's the difference that made your life Lord's wife saw the angels had the, the two angels spent a whole night in their house in Lord's, uh, in Lord's house and the wife was there and the daughters were there even after seeing the angel she still looked back and became a pillar of salt and the Lord is saying remember Lord's wife so that the carelessness that she manifested you will not have that carelessness in Jesus name and you will escape the judgment to come what do you do to escape let's look at this verse of scripture and then we'll pray we're looking at uh, Luke chapter 21 Luke chapter 21 we're looking at verse 34 and take heed to yourselves Let's at any time. Let's at any time. Let's at any time. You know, there are people, they just forget themselves. At any time. Time of wedding, any time. Time of childbirth, any time. Time of I've got a certificate, any time. Time of, uh, you know, building a house, at any time. And time when people are celebrating, celebrating any time. Let's at any time your heart be overcharged with soft-eating and drunkenness and the cares of this life and so that Day, that day we're talking about the day of the Lord come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. Watch ye therefore. Will you watch? Of course you'll watch. Of course you'll watch. Because this is coming out of the mouth of the Lord himself. And he says, watch ye therefore. Watch ye therefore. So that, that she may be accounted worthy. He says, also pray always. You watch and you pray. You pray and you watch. You know, there are some people, all their lives is only prayer. Only prayer. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. Are you watching? You watch your life? Watch over the, over the temptations coming upon you. Your, the besetting sin that will come to just just come to put pressure upon you and drag you into evil. The same partner. Watch. It's not only prayer. And some people only watch. Only they are careful. They never pray. They never pray. If you are watching, how do you get the strength to be able to overcome? Is you watch and you pray. You pray and you watch. Watch here therefore and pray always that 
ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I pray that your coming to the Bible study will not be in vain. I pray that your hearing all these words will not be in vain. I pray that your life will be turned over to the Lord completely and then after you have been saved, you turn to other people and bring them to know the Lord so that the salvation you have got, they will get it also. As soon as kept the judgment, they too will escape the judgment as the day of the Lord comes and then it's not taking on our wares. It will not take them, your neighbors, on our to in Jesus and remember of the times of the seasons brethren you have no need that I write unto you there's no need to say anything more already you have heard it now for yourselves know perfectly we read it in Isaiah we read it in Jeremiah we read it in Ezekiel we read it in Joel we read it in Zephaniah we read it in Zechariah we read it in Amos we read Obadiah we read Matthew we read Mark we read Luke we read Acts of the Apostles we read First Thessalonians and we read First Peter Second Peter we read almost Old Testament New Testament now you know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, the sudden destruction cometh upon them as it has travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. They shall not escape, but we shall escape. You will escape. I will escape. We shall escape in Jesus' name. Why don't you rise up now? We're going to talk to the Lord in prayer. We're going to tell the Lord, Oh Lord, we have heard it. We have heard it. We have heard it. Don't let your heart be cold, and don't let your heart just be careless and carefree because that day is coming that day is coming and you are telling the lord oh lord i know it's coming if you are alive at the time of noah when he was saying the day of devastation of the floor of deluge is coming would you have prayed would you have prayed what you are doing is what you have done at that time that's what he did that's how they perished in that flood you rise up right now and tell the lord oh lord i don't want to perish with them believers i don't want to perish with the people that are careless and carefree i do not want to perish with the people that do not take the word of god lay the word of god to heart tell the lord open your heart open your mouth thank the lord for your salvation thank the lord for sanctification thank the lord for preparing you for that coming day thank the lord that you are not among the them that are living carelessly that will perish in their sin praise the lord that the lord has given you grace to overcome temptation to stand in the evil day by faith and then you quench all the funny darts of the wicked one no discouragement no distraction you are just saying, oh lord i'm following you i'm following you grant me grace to stand i'm standing upon your promises that your grace is sufficient for me keep on telling the lord keep on telling the lord the lord will help me yesterday will help me today the lord will help me today will help me tomorrow oh lord let your grace be sufficient every day, every day of challenge, every day of temptation, every day of trial, every day of persecution, every day of uh, whatever problem, help me to stand tell the Lord, so that that day will not come upon me unawares uh, you'll not be careless when you're just with a woman, you'll not be careless when you're just with a man, you'll not be careless when you're all alone by yourself, you'll not be careless when the church members are not there, you say, oh Lord, let me stand help me to stand, help me to stand let my life be transparent transparently holy transparently righteous so that every moment of the day i'm living according to the word of the lord the lord is calling upon you that your watch that you will pray so that you'll be accounted worthy to escape that day that is coming tell the lord oh lord help me oh lord help me no bribery and corruption and no idolatry no occultism no strange garment no strange clothing and nothing no regalia of the evil people will ever touch your body body does not allow them to pass their spirit onto you take your stand and say oh lord i'm going to stand i'm going to stand and i haven't done all to stand you tell the lord i'm going to stand tell the lord i'm going to stand temptation is there trials are there troubles are there and all the persecution everything will be there but you know it's better to suffer all these little little things now light affliction which is just for a moment so that by the grace of god when the rapture takes place you will go in the rapture open your mouth talk talk to the lord and say lord help me lord help me if you are if you don't pray you'll not be strong but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they are the people that will mount up as with wings as eagles and they are the people that in the evil day they'll be able to stand they'll be able to overcome the strength of the lord will hold you the joy of the lord will be your strength and then your faith in christ will be able to quench all the funny dance of the wicked one just tell the lord lord help me he will help you he'll help you we can come to god and 
and we can say boldly to find help in the day of trial and tribulation and temptation and grace to help in the time of need. Now after you have been secured and after you are standing and after you know that without any shadow of doubt you are born again, you are a new creature in Christ, then you stretch forth a loving hand, a helping hand to other people. You don't want other people to perish to your relatives, your neighbors, your co-tenants and your co-workers and the people around you because you know the terror and you know the judgment coming upon this world. That's why you are telling everybody around you, you are saying, come to the Lord, come to the Lord. And don't allow them to just laugh it away or just giggle it away. You are telling them, this is serious. This is a serious sin. Like Lot was telling the people of Sodom, very serious. Like Abraham was praying, if you find 50 righteous people there, 40 righteous people there, 10 righteous people there, will not spare them. Take it to heart like Abraham did, like Lot did. And then they came out of this, uh, out of this Sodom and Gomorrah, I mean uh, Lot's family. The same thing, you do that to your family, your children, your wife, your husband, and the people that are close to you. Tell them, we need to escape. We need to escape. And we can only escape if we're born again, if we're saved, if we allow the hand of the Lord to touch us, and the might of the Lord to hold us and keep us, keep us faithful and righteous and holy unto the very end. Keep on telling them, keep on and pastors preach 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 the word and don't just entertain the people don't this is the beginning of the year when you know people are just entertaining their people and give them false hope when they should say peace and safety they are telling the people who are living in sin they're saying everything will be all right it's going to be a new year it's going to be wonderful and god is going to give us this going to tell the truth to the people at this urgent hour that when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction shall come upon them preachers preach the truth preach the word in season and out of season and get the people out of their sins make a commitment to the lord this year lord i'm not going to entertain sinners this year lord i'm not going to fool anybody or deceive anybody i'm going to tell them the truth so that they can escape and my brother my sister your neighbors to you are going to tell them you're not laughing with them saying well it's all right it's all right you go to your own church i go to my own church and you know road split to rome no just one road leads to heaven and it's the narrow way that leads to heaven go tell them and tell them that they can be saved too because you too you have been saved so that sudden destruction will not come upon them remember 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 that if you do it faithfully you do it faithfully the reward is going to come upon you we're planting churches now and we're expanding here extending there we want the church to be near everybody so that nobody will say the church was too far i couldn't find the church that will tell me the truth that's why i couldn't make it now that's why we're planting churches everywhere we need preachers and pastors and coordinators and we need singers we need orchestra people we need every, whatever you have you can talk bring your gift of talking and you can sing bring your gift of sing anything you can do bring everything and so that by the grace of god we'll reach out to the people together and nobody will have any excuse number one you make sure you are securing your salvation nothing tampers with salvation and then number two you are reaching out to people everywhere as many as you can touch as many as you can talk to so that they too they come to know the lord the grace of the lord will go with you this year will be a wonderful year for you as we will be the watch of the lord the protection of the lord the preservation of the lord the provision of the lord will be upon you and you'll find that all through this year as we obey the lord good good things will continue to follow us in jesus name remember don't just be hearers of the word alone go out and be doers of the word